Hello everybody. If you're watching this right now, one of two things is happening. You're looking at your child's homework going, what? Or you're, cry you're all crying, screaming, yelling, kicking, howling, and it's not working. If it is the latter, stop. Just stop right now. If this doesn't help, just sign the bottom of it and say, we tried. Send it back in and we will try again tomorrow. If it's the former and you're just looking at this going, huh? This is what I'm here to teach you. Partial quotient division. Um, otherwise known as, please don't teach them the other way. Okay, one of the very worst things that we can do right now at this stage of teaching this type of algorithm to these kids, this partial quotient method, is to say, I don't understand this. Here, let me show you how I used to do it, which is the standard algorithm of long division. Don't. Please, please don't. You will confuse them. Uh, and it will actually be very counterproductive in what we're hoping to achieve here with uh, uh, the Common Core Partial Quotient process, right? So, what is it? Well, actually, it's not terrible, this Partial Quotient. It, there's very sound logic to it. It's nothing extremely wonky or out of the box. All right, it's maybe a little out of the box. Slightly wonky, just slightly. What do we got here? Let's start off with something easy, and let's do three into... Um, 80, oh, I don't know, 1, because that sounds like a good number. I'm looking on my monitor to see if we can read this, and we can, yay. Okay, um, I'll darken up just a little bit. 3 goes into 81. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to play silly right now. I'm going to play that I don't understand my math facts. I'm going to play I don't know how to do this. I don't know what to do. And that's really where partial quotient comes in and is very successful. What partial quotient does to begin with is it starts off with what we call a set of benchmark numbers. These are easy to get our arm around numbers. These are numbers that will help us to break down this division problem and get to an answer. So I'm going to use 1, 5, and 10 as my basic benchmark numbers. Okay? What am I going to do? I'm going to take my benchmark numbers and multiply them each by my divisor. So 1 times 3 equals 3. 1, I'm sorry, 5 times 3 equals 15. And 10 times 3 equals, yeah, 30. Now, I told the kids earlier, I'll say it again now, one way that you can correct yourself on this, this and this, well, it should be the same number with a 0. And this second one should be half of the third one. Okay. These are the benchmark numbers, and this is how you can make sure I did my benchmarks right. We use the benchmark numbers to give us starting points. Now, people with higher fact awareness, aka they know the multiplication facts really, really well, they're going to be a little more advanced. They're going to be able to go in between these numbers. They're going to be able to double it up and do 20 and 30 and 40 because they can. Other people who really don't have the math facts down as well as they could and should and need to, this is who this is designed to help, okay? So what do I do? I look at my three facts here, my three benchmarks, and I say to myself, which benchmark is closest to my divisor without going over, which of course is 30. Now, this is the first major change in that now we're going to make a line that goes down the side like this. This is to keep our partial quotient separate from the math, okay? so. In doing so, I'm going to look and see which number is the biggest. Well, 30 is the biggest number here. It's my 30 is my biggest benchmark number. So I'm going to put my 30 here underneath my 81. How did I get 30? Well, I multiplied 10 times 3. That gave me 30. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to subtract. And uh, 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 1 take away 0 is 1. 8 take away 3, 5. Okay. I'm moving. There's more. I need to subtract again. What is the biggest benchmark number? You guessed it, 30. So I'm going to take another 30 out of here. How did I get 30? Well, I multiply 10 times 3 still. I'm going to subtract again. So that's still 1. And this is a 2. Oh, 30 won't work now because 30 is bigger than 21. So I need to go to my next lowest benchmark number, which is 15. How did I get 15? 5 times 3. And I subtract, borrow, regroup, 
and that's 11, minus 5 is 6, and 1 minus 1 is 0, and wait a moment, 6. I know 6. 3 goes into 6 two times, right? So 2 times 3 is 6, and I'm out of room. So I subtract 6 by the 6, and I get 0, and there it is. I'm done. As soon as this is smaller than the divisor, or 0, I'm done. And in this case, I have a 0. I am done. But I'm not done. I got one more thing to do, and that is write down the answer. How do I do this? Well, I look at here. All of my benchmark numbers I have used here is 10 times 3, which is 30. This is 3 times 10, which is 30. This is 3 times 5, which is 15. This is 3 times 2, which is 6. These are all my benchmarks. These are all the numbers that I used to figure this out. I add these up. 10 plus 10 plus 5 plus 2. That looks like a times, but it's not. It really isn't. 10 plus 10 is 20, plus 5 is 25, plus 2 is 27, and there you have it. That is our answer. Now, a couple of things I noted in class today. Number one is making sure that your benchmark number goes against the bar. Okay, this is your partial quotient right here. So this is the PQ zone, as we, as we nicknamed it in class today. We thought that was cute and clever. This is the PQ zone, and that's really scribbly. But this is where the partial quotient goes, and this is where the divisor goes, outside. Okay, by keeping this here, it keeps everything in a nice straight line, and it makes it very easy down the road to find your solution at the end of the division problem. Okay, um, this is partial quotient, division. This is not hard. Now, again, for those people with better math fact knowledge, they might have recognized immediately with the 21 here that 7 went into 21. Coincidentally, 5 plus 2 is 7. It all works out. All they're doing, if they don't recognize that that's a 7 and they want to go with the 5, it's going to work its way out in the end. Many people may have recognized off the bat that 51 isn't recognizable because it's not in our multiplication facts, but I'm pretty sure, no, I can't do two. I, I don't know what 51 is, and that's why these partial quotients help a lot. Many people, I got off track on the last one. Many people might have looked at the original equation and said, well, 30, that works fine, but I know that I could go twice as many for 60. I could have done 20 here. And you know what? That's both of these. There's your 20. So these both would have been 20. And instead of 81 minus 30, I would have had 81 minus 60, which would have left me at 21. And you can see again how it's all going to work out in the wash there if they take multiple steps or if they can do it in shorter steps, if they can see the numbers and clump them together and take a, take a bigger bite full. Um, I hope that this helps. I hope this helps clear up any misconceptions or, or concerns. Again, I beg you all, A, don't teach them our the normal standard division algorithm. It is very different than this. It will be very confusing for them, and it will end up just really adding to the confusion, not helping them. Uh, B, don't let this become a hissy, kicky, screamy, yelly fit. Sign the bottom, send it on back, and we will continue working on this tomorrow. I do not want them getting frustrated. I don't want that math anxiety starting to form. Uh, we will figure this out, I promise. Everybody have a wonderful night. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good night.